getting a good picture of everybody so it looks nice and handsome and thin. Beautiful. That is Kim Jong-un, as described by his good friend, President Trump. His life has largely been shrouded in secrecy. We do know he has a deep love for the 90s Chicago Bulls and a reputation for becoming unhinged, to put it mildly. So, who is Kim Jong-un? Well, I'm Aisha Tyler, and this is the story of the North Korean Supreme Leader. Kim Jong-un was born in 1982, or 1983, or 1984, no one exactly knows the year, but thanks to his good friend, Dennis Rodman, who sang to him, we do know he was born on January 8th. Happy birthday to you. His parents were dancer Ko Young Hee and North Korean dictator Kim Jong-il. Kim Jong-un's grandfather, Kim Il-sung, was the founder of North Korea. The country was created post-World War II after Japan surrendered and the United States and the Soviet Union divided control of the peninsula. Tensions grew between the Soviet-allied socialist dictatorship in the north, led by Kim Il-sung, and the American-allied capitalist-controlled south, led by Syngman Rhee. The North invaded the South and the Korean War began. U.S. President Truman ordered American troops to fight with South Korea. In the ensuing three-year war, Korea, North and South, was decimated. United States supplied napalm poured over the Korean Peninsula and four million lives were lost. A truce was signed in 1953, leaving the borders of the North and the South left largely unchanged, except for the addition of a heavily guarded demilitarized zone running across their shared border in the middle of the peninsula. Eventually, Sung's tack transitioned from Stalinism to Kim Il-sungism. Sung erected statues and billboards of himself. Citizens were grouped into a class system entitled Songbun that determined every part of their lives, where they worked, where they lived, who they married. In the 80s, the South's economy boomed and the North stagnated. And when the USSR dissolved in 1991, so did their economic aid to North Korea, setting the country into a tailspin with famine. Kim Il-sung died of a heart attack and left the starving country to his son, Kim Jong-il. One estimate says that between 1995 and 1998, up to 2.4 million people starved to death in North Korea. And while Kim Jong-il was running a starving nation, his very well-fed son and soon-to-be ruler of the country was going to school in Switzerland at a small public school in Bern under the alias Pak Un. He'd arrive every day in a chauffeur-driven car, which no one seemed to pay any mind. After all, to everyone, he was nothing more than a diplomat's son, not the dictator's child that he actually was. A classmate recalled Kim acting out. Quote, he kicked us in the shins and even spat at us. Another classmate described him as an introvert and a super competitive basketball player who, like everyone else in the world at the time, was a big Michael Jordan fan. What do you actually talk about with a... Uh... And, and I don't mean this insultingly, a madman murderous dictator. <laughs> Actually, we talk about basketball. On the court, Kim was no stranger to pulling off a great fit. His teacher in Switzerland expanded. He always looked like a, a pro in his NBA clothes. Also the Nikes, the good ones, you know, the Air Max. While at the Swiss school, political notes, his lessons included human rights, women's rights, and the development of democracy. One unit was even called Happiness, Suffering, Life, and Death. Students learned about Martin Luther King Jr., Nelson Mandela, and Mahatma Gandhi. There was a strong emphasis on cultural diversity, religious, ethnic, and social groups, the rights of human beings, and standing in solidarity with the disadvantaged. But it wasn't long before he would reject it all. Kim Jong-un went back to North Korea, where he attended Kim Il-sung Military University. And after his father died of a heart attack in 2011, Kim Jong-un took the reins. And the next time his classmates saw him, he was ruling a country. The jury is out on Kim Jong-un, that he is young, untested, inexperienced, and has, quote, shown proclivities towards violence. Upon taking over, Kim had top rival officials executed, including his own uncle, after he suspected a possible coup. One top official was executed in front of a firing squad for allegedly showing disrespectful posture in a meeting. One general who fell asleep in a meeting was executed by an anti-aircraft gun. It's also widely believed that Kim Jong-un fatally poisoned his half-brother, Kim Jong-nam, at the Kuala Lumpur airport in Malaysia. Two women approached him and rubbed a nerve agent on his face, and he collapsed minutes later. In Kim Jong-un's first six years, he reportedly executed 340 people, including at least 70 Korean officials. They're executed by 50 caliber 
ZPU-4 anti-aircraft machine gun battery. The bodies are pulverized. There is nothing left behind. Under Kim Jong-un's rule, human rights abuses have continued to plague the country. A 2014 United Nations report which examined North Korea found atrocities committed throughout the country, including but not limited to extermination, murder, enslavement, torture, imprisonment, rape, forced abortions and other sexual violence, persecution on political, religious, racial, and gender grounds, the forcible transfer of populations, the enforced disappearance of persons, and the inhumane act of knowingly causing prolonged starvation. To keep its citizens in line, the government uses surveillance, coercion, fear, and punishment to prevent any dissent. It also restricts every form of basic civil liberty, like freedom of expression, religion, thought, assembly, opinion, and information. If you want to own a computer, you need to get permission from the government first. And even then, only government-approved content is available. If you violate any of their rules, you may be sent to a labor camp or face execution. Perhaps one of the country's most inhumane laws is the Three Generations Rule, which was established in 1972 by Kim's grandfather, Kim Il-sung. Any serious crime warrants punishment, not just for the person who committed the crime, but for three generations of their family as well. Kim Il-sung said that this was the only way to wipe out the, quote, seed of class enemies. Crimes to warrant such a brutal reaction allegedly include failing to wipe dust off of portraits of members of the Kim dynasty. Kim Jong-un's regime continues to put people in political prison camps without trial. In 2014, up to 120,000 incarcerated people were in the country's prisons, where many are starved, forced to work, tortured, or raped. But in 2017, back in America, former game show host Donald J. Trump took the White House. North Korea conducted a series of bold missile tests with both ballistic and nuclear weapons, which was followed by a frightening exchange of rhetoric between Trump and Kim. No one has shown more contempt for other nations and for the well-being of their own people than the depraved regime in North Korea. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself. Kim Jong-un fired back. From North Korea, a unique threat, and from Kim Jong-un, a first message in English, vowing to make President Trump, quote, pay dearly, calling him a mentally deranged dotard. But a year later, at a summit in Singapore, Trump met with Kim Jong-un, which was the first time ever that a sitting United States president met with a North Korean leader. It's unclear if the meeting was set up, at least in part, for Trump to get recommendations for statue sculptors. The two leaders reaffirmed an agreement to denuclearize the Korean peninsula. I was really being tough, and so was he. And we were going back and forth, and then we fell in love. But this may have been a one-sided love story, because according to the UN, North Korea did not halt its illicit nuclear and ballistic missile programs, which it continued to enhance in violation of Security Council resolutions. In fact, just a month after the summit, North Korea launched two short-range missiles. Trump was duped. Fast forward to 2020, and Trump and Kim Jong-un's bromance was initially believed to have come to an end after reports surfaced claiming Kim Jong-un had passed away from a botched heart surgery. However, weeks later, video footage surfaced of the chain-smoking Supreme Leader strolling down the street, sucking on what was likely an Yves Saint Laurent cigarette at an event. Trump was overjoyed to see him alive, tweeting, I, for one, am glad to see he is back and well, exclamation point. Now Trump can finally get back to being duped. Hey, thanks for watching Who Is? Did you know we have a podcast now too? On Who Is, the podcast, I'll dive deep into the fascinating lives of the people who run things, whose decisions impact every aspect of our lives. How did they get where they are today? And knowing that, what might they do next? From politicians to the ultra rich, to military contractors and monarchs and media moguls, I'll introduce you to the reporters and experts who know these real life world molders best sharp-eyed observers and confidants who observe our subjects as they make the decisions that define our everyday lives. To see more, hit the link or search Who Is on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. And for more of the video series you know and love, be sure to check out the Snapchat versions and our series playlists on YouTube and Facebook.